presume you are moving along to the next room. I'm not Can we actually check this room, or was there just nothing in there? <laughs> there is nothing in there. Oh, gosh. I kind of, when you did the ceiling check, it's like, oh, there's nothing on the ceiling. Presume that you kind of stood, went in, looked around a little bit, kind of carefully, you know, checking for traps. <laughs> I took all that into account cinematically. No. I, I, this is how I picture it. Kanto walks into the room, and he's like, look it up. He's like, all right, guys, pay attention. They're going to come out any second now. And the skeleton's kind of, yeah, skeleton's got to slowly stand up all around us. Any second. <laughs> any second. <laughs> all right. So cross the hall to the other door. Yeah, that sounds good. Unless someone's you against that. Time. That's too late now, I suppose. This chamber was once an office or storeroom of some kind. Ooh. A large stone counter bisects the room set with three dusty balance scales made of iron. Cubby holes carved into the north wall are stuffed with dusty paper scraps. Several long dead corpses, gnomes and orcs by their look, are sprawled across the floor. Thorlin, can you hammer them in the head <laughs> before we... Sure! <laughs> As Thorlin is tending to that business, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, can I inspect, not touch, inspect the scales? Yeah. They appear to literally be iron scales for weighing out ore and gold and other such things. Because, as you know, this was a uh, a mine, yeah. uh, and also where they would have made and sold magical items. So there would have been a lot of uh, contracts and dealing here. So they don't seem like they're arranged in a particular linear order or anything. They are in a line, but they all seem to match. They are at various levels of balance. Uh, they seem to be generally around the middle, but years of dust and, like, cobweb and whatever else, you know, has kind of, maybe they're a little off-kilter, but it's not like one is down on the left and one is... Okay. Can I just pick one up? For all your uh, intents and purposes, as far as you can tell, you do not think it's any sort of trap or riddle or... Okay. And that, yes, you pick them up, and it seems to be a normal iron scale. It's fairly heavy, Yeah. but um, it, you know, moves and creaks as you touch it. Right. As it creaks and lowers, the floor drops now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You did Who the As he's that? playing with that, Callisto, what are you doing? I'll stand by the door and... Smoke a cigarette. Blow bubbles. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to Smoke a cigarette and roll her eyes. Okay, so she stands guard. All right. The skeletons are pulverized. The scale <laughs> has been, you know, investigated. Okay. I'll check the actual desk now, if that's all right. Um, give me a perception check. Yes. Uh, that's not bad. I rolled a 17. You notice a set of what appears to be jeweler's tools <laughs> sitting on the counter. The investigation shows you that neither you nor Thorlin uh, or Callista, for magical purposes, could use these anymore to um, work with gems. But you think you could improvise them as a set of thieves' tools. Oh, excellent. Which turns out is very convenient because there's a locked strong box that you find under the counter. Oh, wonderful. That's awesome. Dun, dun, I'll, I'll, dun. I'll snag those. And was it my jack-of-all-trades helps with lockpicking? I think it does. Uh, yeah, because yeah. you don't have training in lockpicking. Yeah, right. I, I, right. So it gets plus two. We well, uh, get half proficiencies. So. Right, right. Oh, plus one. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, I will... How, how big is this strong box? Just curious. Significant. Okay, it's not something I can stick in my pocket and two years yeah. later. You think it's going to be hard to open. Uh, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll do a quick check for traps. You, uh, you, this might be actually one of those times where uh, bardic inspiration outside of combat is not a bad idea. Right. Uh, but, for traps, I rolled 18 total. Um... You find uh, nothing. You think it is literally uh, just, you know, strong box. It, it would have been well enough protected at the time. Cool. It took an army to sack this place. So. <laughs> um, okay, here comes the big one, guys. Here comes the loot. That is a 19. You are so lucky. <laughs> plus a, uh, let's see, was it my dexterity, I believe? It's plus Oh, just... it does get your dexterity, yeah. Yeah, so that's 20. I thought you had to roll a 19 or 20 to open this, but you're good. 22 plus my proficiency is 1, so 23. Yeah. Technically, this isn't calling this a lock picking. Lock picking is a skill? Is it on the sheet? Is it a skill? Uh, no. Nope. Oh. Then it's just a dexterity check, so that's my bad. Cool. 
Um, so actually, you wouldn't get your plus one on that. You, so you do your dexterity. Cool. I could give you a plus one in proficiency for using those, I suppose. Yeah. But, uh, in this particular... Without it, it's still 22. Yeah, we can discuss that later. And you needed a 20. Awesome. Inside. Thorlin, are you ready? I'm ready. 600 copper. 180, zero, or 180 uh, silver. Ooh. Nine zero electrum. Clista, Clista, come look, come look. Six zero gold. <laughs> it's so and pretty. A okay. A pear tree. That's not actual loot. Don't write that down. It was just full of money. Yep. That's the best treasure chest ever. <laughs> it's unfortunate that it was so hard to open and it's just money, but yeah, that's pretty nice. I don't mind. Um. It's shiny. Right. <laughs> Thorlin's boots are just like he just spills money wherever he walks. <laughs> you, you need to get boots of holding. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what I want. We'll get a bag of holding and resew it to be boots. Into the line. Really. His, his feet are just in another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about comfort all day long? <laughs> it's like I'm walking on clouds of air. I think you would feel like you were constantly falling. I think I think he'd literally fall into his boots. Up to his, like, crotch. Up to however our <laughs> <laughs> can make the move shorter. <laughs> That's why I have to fill it with gold. Right. You can move back into the hallway. Can oh, I? Well, I guess, uh, there's... Yeah. Can I check that rubble? The rubble. There's, like, rubble below us. I don't know if there's anything important about it. But I guess not oh, if you didn't no, even know that's it. that's the old entrance that has been caved in. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. Um, um, you believe that the lanterns and the reliefs and the carvings and whatnot were meant to greet people and be like, yeah. check out our badass cave. Just uh, a, an I, a thought. If we hit that with something like maybe explosive or something like that, would we be able to get out through that way? You don't think so. No. Okay. It so looks like significant rubble. Wanted to cover all my bases. All right. Anything else in that room? Uh, I'm I'm fine. Unless there's right. something more. <laughs> no, we're just a little cubby holes and papers yeah. and stuff. Uh, the right. papers look like they could just fall apart if I grabbed them, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. And in fact, if you touch them, they disintegrate. Oh, no fun. Um, all right, so back into the hallway. Back into th room three. Do a quick look before we walk in to make sure no one's taken up residence while we were <laughs> screwing It around. seems safe. The corpses of Sturgis seem undisturbed. I kick one as we walk by. Adder and you left them in. <laughs> um, they rise. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Are you going... What about east? All right. You come across another cavern. Ooh. This cavern has more bats. Has dense <laughs> carpets of weird fungi covering large sections of the floor. Uh. The growth includes puffballs a foot across, weird shelf fungus growing on stalagmites, and large stalks and caps a good five feet tall. Some of the puffballs glow with an eerie green phosphorescence. Okay, I know what I want to do. Buy a bolt at the. Uh... Oh, the fungus? yeah, that, that doesn't cost me a bolt. So, yeah, go ahead. But, uh, Kanto steps back. <laughs> Guess it's explosive. I'll, uh, fire bolt the fungus. One of the puffballs? Uh, sure, I'll do that one first. There's a lot of fungus. You're yeah. not just going to be like, oh, okay, one mushroom, two mushroom, done. Yeah, hit, hit, hit one of the puffballs, right? I'll hit one of the, yeah, that's the idea. It immediately explodes outward as the puff kind of goes Pff! but then all the little particles erupt in fire and burn away almost like a firework that kind of lingers as like a flame and then it dis disappears and dissipates uh, would it look it like stuff. would it look like if you were standing next to it that would hurt badly it would maybe singe and, and burn you but only because of her fireball erupting kind of like how you know you know how like um, grain mills will explode because of the dust in the air. It's like that. Hmm. So she's just igniting all the little particles after they puff out. Interesting. Because it's, it's flammable shit. Cool. I guess. And once that loads, there you go. Not as, not as explosive as I was hoping, but it works. Uh, it looks like we can avoid the fungus if we'd like to. Looks are deceiving. Oh. Okay. Give me a second to check that. <laughs> Or we can just go back there, and go there different. Is, there is literally, like, carpet of fungus, like, little mold or moss. You know, it kind of looks like mossy, 
Except you, you know it's, it's pretty much across everything. Okay. Uh, 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 burning down. hands us a path <laughs> through it. <laughs> Set everything on fire. It's not a bad idea, except for... Actually, but if you create a giant fire, you are in a cavern. <laughs> he sucks all the air. <laughs> Let's just go for it. I mean, we could I'm go around. To... Kanto's going to pull out his crossbow and kind of stand... Mm -hmm. Take a take a nice little crouched position with his crossbow up right below the eight, and he'll let other people go across the fungus if they'd like to. Um, Thorlin could jump it, right? Um, yeah, probably pretty easily. We're talking 15, 20, 30 feet to aim properly into the other tunnel. Um, you could make that jump. Uh, I would ask for you to probably make an athletics check or a dexterity check to. Uh, aim properly. However, the puffballs and various other you know, mushroom stalks are in your way, so you have to crash through those. <laughs> Not only that, but that still wouldn't prove to the other people that the fungus was safe to traverse. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the idea. <laughs> Send a dwarf well, so, in to so see so if I he comes back I should run across to see what it does for you guys first. Okay. Yes. <laughs> now, I, now I understand my position and my job requirements. Yes. I will, I will run across. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Lister, <laughs> are you standing with Kanto? Or are you following behind Thorlin? I'm They're standing. waiting to see if I make it. Across. Yeah, exactly. I'm standing behind Kanto. All <laughs> right. As your boots hit the ground, tiny little spores erupt from all the fungus. Oh, thank God. <laughs> the spores come not only from the fungus that you step on and crush, splattering them into the air, but also from adjacent funguses, as if... Fungi, sorry. As if triggered uh, through some connection to each other. I found the mold trap. A gas releases from the... Carpet of fungus into the air. <laughs> I need everyone. Oh. Constitution check as the gas fills the chamber. This oh. is poison, I assume. This is a constitution saving throw versus poison damage. Luckily, I have good constitution. Yeah, okay. 23. Uh, 18 for Kanto? Yeah, 15 plus 3. 18. I've got 14. You all manage to resist. Uh, but the gas appears to be continuing to hang in the air. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> North or back the way you came? Uh, oh, I guess we could keep moving, couldn't we? In theory. In theory. The trap is, the, the trap is already sprung, so we might as That's well. It. That's it. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> no, we just, we just set through. off the mushroom alarm. You're also not going to get through without having to take more checks. Yeah, King Koopa's right around the corner here. Oh, let's go back then. Okay. Retreat out of the room. You get out of the, the density of the gas and kind of look back, coughing a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to make you guys check again. Uh, uh, Thorlin would, would maybe have to, but since he's a dwarf, it's not really what he just kind of shrugs off as he runs through holding his breath. You notice that after about a minute, the heavy gas has kind of dispersed, spores have settled again, but you're quite certain every step will release the gas into the air. Ugh. All right, well, let's take you up. maybe we'll find something like uh, something we can use in this situation and come back if we need to. I mean, you you could cross through it, but like I said, I was going to make you check again. So just whether or not you wanted to risk the Constitution check again, it truly wasn't a very hard check. All right, <laughs> it's uh, Callista's turn to choose. You see, um, I like so back to the room where we were almost killed. Three. And then, yeah. And then um, take the go north to the left tunnel thing. That's the straight one, not the yeah. curvy one, or the no. the weird one. You enter a series of corridors and tunnels that seem to interlock and meet. So we got a little extra there on the on the right. That's nice. <laughs> this is also okay. presuming that you kind of cautiously check around corners. Yeah. Go a few a few feet in one direction, or you know, like fifty feet in one direction. Okay, back. It looks safe. Whatever. Oh. Canto, your turn to pick. Uh, it's your turn, actually, sir. Oh well, let's go with door number one on the left. Sounds good to me. Thorlin will lead the way, I'm sure. 
Of course. <laughs> I think we just needed to bring three fighters. Right? <laughs> just oh. action surge our way through this whole freaking dungeon. <laughs> Where are you looking? A fighter, a barbarian, and a paladin walked into a tavern. <laughs> I'm sorry, where, where, are, where are you going? Uh, left, far left corridor. Up. Oh. oh, okay, north, but on the far left. Excellent. Yeah. Door me. number one. I want to actually come up with an ending to that joke, so we should uh, work on that. <laughs> this direction seems to lead into a slightly different area of tunnels and corridors. We're just going to circle back around to the chasm. Boy, it's getting mazy. Yeah, and, and this is actually the part that made me decide to kind of break it up significantly. Because I wanted you guys to have the feel of, okay, well, you know, shit's going on here. Um, and just because you can see all that doesn't mean that there's not things like, you know, there could be a pile of treasure up there, you know, or something. So, like. <laughs> or more frickin' sturges. Send, send uh, <laughs> you know, thrown into the end of one tunnel while. Calista and Kanto kind of look at the other direction and make sure nothing comes. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what we should do is split up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I can tell you mentioned that. Can I uh, also just have a marching order? Uh, Thorland's first. Kanto. Calista in back. Cal Calista's back at the corner peering around the edge. <laughs> Calista's actually gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm back at the entrance. <laughs> This area seems to consist of numerous intersecting passages. Uh, you notice here that the ceilings are only uh, about six feet high, and um, several of these uh, passages end in partially excavated rock faces. You get the impression that perhaps the miners left uh, the ones that kind of end in half-finished areas are where they were kind of searching and then said, well, nope, this isn't. Well, let's move, let's try a different tunnel. So they, they abandoned that particular passage. Do you want to continue on to the west? Go back into I, three. I don't want to head back to the west just because I feel like we're going to end up circling around. So there's that little donut area? Yeah. There is a door on the right there. Yes, and I see there's that. There's a door kind of below that from the other area Yeah. that you most certainly would have seen by now. Uh, just check the door, see if it seems okay. Seems like a legitimate door. Yeah. Okay, it's a door. Thorlin, I found a door. You like doors. <laughs> <laughs> Thorlin will charge the door. <laughs> Give me a strength check. <laughs> 22. You bust the door open. Yes! But not, it doesn't break the door, but I mean, like, the door swings because it's a giant stone door. The door swings open. Old stone bunks and orderly rows line the walls of this chamber, and a corroded iron brazier full of old coals stand near the middle of the room. The bones of a half dozen dwarves and orcs lie strewn about, clad in scraps of armor. Three gray, hunched figures squat among the remains, mm -hmm. pawing at scraps and gnawing on the bones. I believe this is Callista's expertise. Just saying. Is it? You. You like to shoot things before talking to them, right? It's kind of your thing. Well, I, I wouldn't mind you going all diplomatic on them, if you want. Roll initiative. Oh, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> so much for diplomacy. Either because you took too long, or because there was no chance. You can decide. Seventeen. <sighs> Nine for Kanto. Uh, eight for me. The ghouls rolled a natural one. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't try to talk to them. Take my hand out. Hi, I'm Kanto. No! <laughs> You're ghouls. ghouls, eh? Yep. Well, They're from the old ghoul school next door. Oh. oh. Heard nice things about Pretty that place. Cool. Uh, and then there were two, because I will cleave one with Hugh. 21 nice. to hit. Hit. That would be 11 damage. You seem to do significant damage to him. Yeah. Hmm. How many special dice do you have left? One. Okay. I would not use it if you can help it. <laughs> I wasn't going to. I figured I'd hack on these guys for a little while. Kanto? Or are you going to do anything else? Nope, that's all I got. Kanto will just snipe the one. You know, make room for Callista if you can so she can shoot in there. And then snipe, uh, snipe the one that he has hit. If you're wanting to make room for Callista, I'm going to say that you can move through the door. Okay. Into the room. 
but you know, obviously in actual game mechanics, you can just shoot through each other. Oh. If you want to be cinematic and yeah. like play it out. You step into the room and then shoot around Thorland. It's a little bit cooler. Yeah. That's... Or like over the top of me because I'm short. That was kind of the idea of it, but okay, sounds good. Uh, to hit, I rolled a 14 plus five is 19. And for damage, the D8 plus 3, I rolled a 6, plus 3 is 9. He looks pretty worse for wear. Oh, jeez. I thought that would have done it for sure. Callista? Finish him. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Shoot that guy. Step up. <laughs> hands the room. Oh, gosh. You could probably avoid getting canto. <laughs> hey. Go for it. <laughs> I'm going to firebolt the... One that Kanto wounded. <laughs> Took my kill! <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, no. Not really. Uh, seven plus... Fourteen? Yep. Nice. Yeah, that seven attack bonus is nice. Nine. For so damage. you went at level four, you, instead of getting a feat, you went up to charisma? Yeah. So max... Did you, can't you do the same thing? Yep. Thorlin took what at level four? Uh, martial adept. What does that so do? Dice, that's right. Oh, gave nice. Me two extra, you know, give me an extra dice and two extra maneuvers. Super. <laughs> that's super useful. Yeah, for for that. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm sorry. How much damage did you do? Nine. Dead. Yay. Two left. Good teamwork, this guys. This might have been a good spot for a fireball. Dave, do you really want that? Do you really want that on you? Has, has anybody ever asked me if I wanted it before? <laughs> the, the actual fireball hasn't come up yet. The, so wait. <clears throat> Thorland, that sounds like it comes from more than just... <laughs> I mean, dark, on dark place in your life. <laughs> um, there was this one time <laughs> where this one girl oh, kept burning me oh, over and over. Not where I was expecting that to go, but continue. <laughs> she just kept burning me. I didn't do anything. She's floating in the air, burning me. <laughs> Ghouls have a special ability Great. that doesn't work on elves Yay. or undead. But yeah. I don't know why it doesn't work on elves. So I don't think it. I don't think you'd be immune to it. Oh. Is it a charm? No. Weird. It's their. Uh, it's their ghoul paralysis. Does it have to work like, on me? Touch and whatnot. <laughs> Oh. I have no idea why it doesn't work on elves. I'll have to look into that. Um. Anyway. If anyone uh, in the comments knows, please tell us. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read up on it later. But, or, uh, or that, whatever. So, there, I'm presuming he's using... I don't, he has a bite and claws, but he can't use both. I don't think in the same turn. Usually. It'll tell you. Attacks, yeah. So, um, he's using his claws. Rolled a 17. And the other one rolled a 10. Uh, I won't... Are they attacking Thorland? Yes. Um, I'm just going to let it happen. I only have okay. two two left, I yeah. think. Thorland takes one hit. Uh, and the other missed? Yeah. I'm going to spend my last die to repost his ass. Okay, give me one second. Y'all just been posted again. <laughs> <laughs> we really need at least one more person in this party. Seven damage. And I need you to take a constitution saving throw. Con save. Coming right up. That is a 21. Nice. Good. Good. Because paralyzed is not fun. Um, no paralyzed. Actually, I would, have, I would have had to have re-rolled the one that missed you. Cause... Now I can repost? Yes. With a s yes. 18 to hit? Rolling efficiently at all the same time doesn't necessarily work. Uh, is, uh, yes. 18 hits? Okay. 18 hits? That is 10, 16 damage. You take 16 damage. 16 damage. And that's my last die. Now you just need to put him down. Oh, no, you'll probably die more. <laughs> <laughs> there will be many die. To accent that, you hear another crashing boom of wave, but it sounds louder. Oh. Okay. Wave Echo awesome. Cave. Into this room. We're gonna get hit by like some massive magical blast here. Right. Every like ten minutes or something crazy like that. Okay. 
If you would like to start paying attention to the time between the waves. I would like to, actually. Right. That was my my thought when you made the second one. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> um, you haven't really, you, you kind of realize now that you notice that there have been several, but they've kind of just been background noise. Yeah. Uh, this one, because it's accenting during the, the thing, you know, basically, right as you were posted, you hear the, the boom. Um, boom. But you will, you will listen for the timing, and the next time you'll probably have, at least you'll know the, between those two. Cool. Anyway, it is now someone's turn. Thorlin. Yay! Uh, I will attack the one I just reposted. Okay. Oh, that is a 15 to hit. Hit. And 8 damage. Dead. Oh. You did 16 to it before, right? Yep. Uh, cool. Or, can I tell? One more remains? One more remains, huh? I have a little level one... Uh, I do not have a level one spell. A level two spell. And... Little see. GM hints, they're on Thorland. They're not really that sure. <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of thinking if I wanted to do end this now or just kind of whittle him away. I'll just shoot him. With I, a... was, I was pretty good. I mean... You're probably gonna have to rest somewhere along the way anyway, because now he's out of dice. Well, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if I do a short rest. I have to do a long rest to get my spells that's back. What, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I rolled a 23 to hit, and I'm guessing that's good enough. So I'm yeah. gonna shoot and do roll another six, so nine damage. Okay. Callista. Oh, firebolt him. That's a 19. Damage. Eight. Okay. <laughs> Kanto and Callista can't take down one of them, and Thorne's just like hacking through them like <laughs> weeds. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he can't cast spells. Yeah, I, um, guess, I guess that's cool. This is going to be a hit with a roll of a 17. Yeah. Okay. Going through. Six damage. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Kind of debating making if you uh, have advantage on something. Oh, wait, this is on me, isn't it? Yes. And you still <laughs> roll a one. I'm all sitting uh, back waiting for somebody to make the roll. One. But on the same token, if you have disadvantage and you roll a 20, you can count the 20. Debating it. Not sure if I want to implement it. We might try it with the ults. 16. Yeah. Did you take the six damage? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is your turn. I will slash at him with a mighty, mighty 24 to hit. Yeah. Which is 14 damage. Dead. And I'm going to... Oh, that's the last one? Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so that's why I told him not to waste a spell. Yeah. Well, no, you know what, I'll... And... Yeah. Was not hurt. You want to heal yourself? I'm going to second wind. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It is technically your turn. So let's do a quick recap. Oh, Continue. I don't know if this is a good omen or a bad omen, but I just opened fear 13. 13. I think you're not slurring. I think means it's okay. No, no, it's, it's not the 13th one I drank tonight. Oh, it's, it's, it's a, it's actual a home, thir- Yeah, okay. It's a homebrew, and this was the 13th one I bottled out of the batch. That's not good. <laughs> is, is this more orc bro? <laughs> no, this is actually something I made up as I went along for my wife's barbecue. I tried to make something a little bit sweet and a little bit light that normal people besides me would like. Let's let's do just for fun sakes. Let's do a quick count here. Can't, Thorland has ten of those sturges. Uh, he did kill all ten of them. Yes. Yes. He, Most of them he could have robbed though. He's got. And they do only have two HP. Two ghouls. And did he get? What, eight of the skeletons? <laughs> Probably close to. <laughs> Thorland is on a r- r- rampage. Hey. Well, we're, we're on my home turf. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's, he's, you know what? I mean, I, I feel at home for the first time in months. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. He got all of the loot. <laughs> That's yeah, right. That's he's true. fucking rolling and playing. I gotta earn awesome. my boots. Uh, <laughs> we should have a picture of Thorland just like 
strapped to the nine with all this glowing shit. And like, he just looks like this fully epic doll. Well, Kanto and, and Callista like have patches and holes. Yeah, it's not the same Just like, like <laughs> glaring at the dwarf. Like, what? Sad. I, I like Callista's that. Just you know, polishing her nails. I'll, I'll um, mock it up later. Okay, so uh, where would you like to go from six? Uh, well, is there are those little things in the room? Are those just like beds, or is that There's not just stone cots? Okay. There is nothing of interest in this room. We okay. could rest. You could uh, attempt to bar the doors and rest. A short rest might be good. You okay I'll with that, Callista? Short... I'm, I'm great with any kind of rest. When did you get your expertise dice back? Short, short rest. Mar- or is it expertise or martial? Uh, uh, superiority Marshall. die is what they call them. Martial uh, was, I think, yeah. back in the playtest when uh, ah. everything happened. Okay. That oh. shows you how well I know it. Uh, so, Calista, do you want? Are you okay with the short le- short rest? Yeah, sure. Cool. Let's see if we can get one done here. Come on. Uh, yeah, are you only taking a short rest? That's fine. So, you're, I'm presuming you're barring the doors, then taking a short rest. As much as we can. Push the cots in front of them. <laughs> right. I made two rolls. You are fine. Okay. Uh, everyone who spins a hit die will get back. Five extra hit points for my nice, nice little song of rest. Five extra? But yeah. you have to take at least one of your hit die to get that. Yep. Oh, I'm using I'm using both of what I have left. <laughs> Did you take that much damage? Uh, I took quite a bit. He's been beat okay. up pretty good. Five plus your constitution twice, plus two rolls of hit die. Uh, you can also just do them in order. Be like, all right, one. All right, get all the both. I get the one roll, my constitution, and the bonus. And then, okay, still need more. Another die plus constitution. No Can- Canto perfectly filled up his hit points. Exactly. That's nice. Nice. I'm very, very close to full. Plus, I got all my dice and everything back. So. Yep. You're out of hit dice. If you won't get those back until a long rest, and any no, no. use from this. I've, oh, my hit dice. Yes, I'm out of hit dice. Just the only reason for you to long rest. I have one. Uh, bardic, so the back. bardic die, and I've only used one of my spells, so. All right, so uh, Lex chose, or Callista, chose to leave the room through the south door, go east, and then north up to where there was not a door, Callista, but an opening in the hallway. Um, give me a second. Same marching order, please. Yeah. I'll presume the same marching order until someone tells me otherwise. Okay. This seems to be a slight, like, Kind of just open space before there's a uh, door with, uh, in a wall. I'll check for traps and all that. Should we you know, do? Yeah, what? check for traps and then. Oh, I rolled a two, so that's uh. Uh-oh. You're <clears> quite seven. certain that there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thorlin, I'm quite certain there's nothing there. I don't even think it's a door. I say we do the rolling dwarf, where Canto pushes open the door and the dwarf literally rolls into the room <laughs> and pops up. <laughs> A circus act, or you know, or I, I he rolls. Took alert as my feet, so I can yeah. never be surprised again. <laughs> we we let the dwarf roll, and Kanto kind of rides him like a barrel, like kicking his feet out as they go into the room. <laughs> <laughs> Doing like the log roll. Yeah, exactly. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Nobody expects the dwarf roll. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> as you enter the ruined storeroom. The eastern wall of this chamber has collapsed into a mass of rubble. To the north, a door stands ajar. Oh. Huh. I didn't realize that was the rubble, and not just a cave wall roughly. Oh, okay, yeah, I was Sense. I'm I was with you. I was already in the room. Yeah, so well it it reads funny, sorry. To the north a door stands ajar, leading to a good sized storeroom. Dusty kegs are tucked neatly against the walls, all cracked and split open from age. It's obvious that the ale or other liquid has long since evaporated. Well, the mid-dungeon drinking contest. You can easily bar and block this door, making it possibly the most secure room in the entire camp. Okay. Oh, shit. Well noted. We have our sleep room if we need to. For now, I'm good. Thorland seems pretty Motel good. Motel 7. Yeah, I'm good. Mot- I like it. Nice. Motel 7. I like it. That's good. Near Bunk Room 6. Yes. All right. <laughs> Where to next? 
Uh, that's my turn, I think. Yeah. Sure. No, it's Thorland's. Uh, let's just keep going up the hallway. Got to find us a nine and a two. I think two would have been uh, west of the chasm. More than likely. Think that would have been a dead end. No. I think Buzz, are you my mic while mocking you? You enter, or uh, as you move up the hall, you see that it opens into a larger cavern space. Not tight tunnels and not a small room. Oh, yeah, because uh, large cavern spaces have been so nice to us so far. Right. More space for bigger monsters. They grow to their environment, you know. turn the page. And you're attacked by a giant goldfish? Steep escarpments divide this large cavern into three sections. High ledges at either end and a lower section in the middle. Oh, crap. Carved stone stairs climb up to the ledges. Two large tables stand in the middle section along with a pair of old braziers. A small table stands on the eastern ledge. The skeletal remains of a dozen dead warders, dwarves, gnomes, orcs, and ogres, attest to the fear- fierceness of the fighting that took place here long ago. Oh, nothing's moving around? You do see anything moving around now? All right. I'd like to do a perception check just to kind of take a general look around to see if anything looks... Like, yeah. More like a stealth spotting check. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Uh, that's a 19? You don't really see anything. You see that there's some dark shadows and the flitting of perception with your dark vision, but you don't see anything. I'm really glad we all brought night vi- or dark vision p- characters. <laughs> Right. And as you turn and say that to your friends, that you're so glad that everyone can see in the dark, um, you are not surprised as ghouls leap from the western ledge. Hey. Clearly hiding up there. Well, at least they're a little ways away from us. That's nice. They basically immediately attack anything they, they see or sense in the room. Um, presumably you're all kind of near that, that tunnel area. Yeah. But, uh, band out to that. So uh, we're going to roll initiative. Uh, the humming just stops. Yeah, that was nice. Eight for Kanto. <laughs> <laughs> One or twenty. One. <laughs> uh, Thirteen. Poor showing. Poor showing. I believe Callista starts the battle. You see seven ghouls. Oh. Holy crap. I heard you from the western ledge. How far away are they from me? Um, you guys are on the right side of the nine, and they are at the ledge. And each one of those squares is, is ten feet, so... Uh, so hopefully two turns. They are fifty feet. Oh, yeah, probably. Mid- mid- middle. We'll get like one turn if we don't back up. <laughs> I'm going to firebolt one. Five. Not good enough. I figured. Can't do it? Oh, goody. I think. What did you roll? Eight. I rolled, uh, yeah. Three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, five plus three is eight. Let's see. This could be dangerous, but can I get to the top of the stairs on the right? On the east side? Yeah. I have 30 feet. I will say yes. Okay. Oh, you only have 30 feet, don't you? Yeah, I figured if I was on the top right or whatever... I can oh, make so you it. Can get to the, you can get to basically the top of the stairs, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. You're kind of standing like, you know, your your kind chest of. is probably like above the next level. You yeah. know what I mean? My my goal is to get up there and snipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll run up to the top of the stairs, and I would like to drop. Uh, I gotta see the range on it. Does anyone have the spell books? Spell or the book open? Oh, I do. Never mind. I want to drop a fairy fire on him. Uh, if I have They're the ring, all within twenty feet of each other. That's that's fine. As many as I can hit, is okay. great. Is it a radius of twenty? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll say you can get all but two. I'll say there's one on the southern edge of the ledge and one on the northern edge of the ledge, and those are the two you can't get. Okay, that's fine. Uh, fairy fire is a. 
Uh, dexterity saving throw, which is not good, I don't think, but whatever. And range is 60 feet. Your save is 14, 15 now? Uh, yeah, 15. Okay. One pass, one fail. Uh, two more fail. Nice. One more fail. So, okay. three are not fairy fired. The other four are. Excellent. That is good enough for me. I'm happy with that result. That's uh, advantage on yep. all attacks versus them? Yep. For pretty much all of combat? Uh, concentration up to one minute is the only... No save, right? Yeah, no save. Okay. All right. Um, bonus action? Uh, none for now. Okay. Thorland. Let's see. They're still like 50 feet away from me, huh? Pretty much. <clears throat> okay. You can jump at them. <laughs> I was going to ask. Because I would like to jump at one of them. Uh, and Into the middle... The south or to the north? Uh, let's see. see. I will jump toward the middle or the south. I will jump toward the southerly side. Okay. Are any of those fairy fired? I'm going to say the south, southernmost, the northernmost, and the middlest are not. The middle of the school. He's so sweet. Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> the uh, middlest, like littlest. Oh right, yeah. Uh, okay. So you could jump directly at the one that's not fairy fire, or kind of like try to like get in the middle of three of them. I'll, I'll go right at him, right right at the one that's not fairy okay, fire. Give me an athletics <clears throat> check just for ink. Wait, you're attacking the one that's not fairy fired? Sure. <laughs> okay. For now, if if there are any left when I get done with this guy, I'll go after the next one in line, and if he's, he's fairy fired, I'll have fun. Super jumping at <laughs> the one that's not colorful. <laughs> <Right. This Yeah! laughs> <laughs> Bionic Man jump, and uh, it's a 17 plus 5, so 22 for my athletics. He's different! I accept it. You can land right in front of him, basically. Shring! Don't you, and, don't you uh, like, drop kick him? I wish, but instead, I'm going to make this oh, a... Oh, man. A monk with that those boots would be so hilarious. <laughs> I was just, I was just <laughs> thinking. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, you know, I'm going to... Uh, ah, damn. Do I want to actually make a special one on this, or do I want to try and faint and then kill him? You know what? I'll just make a straight attack on this one. <laughs> oh, crit. Good call. Uh, that is going to be... I should have taken the other die. I would have got an automatic hot, hot seat. 14, uh, and an 8 is, uh... 24? That would be 16 plus 6. Oh, 6. 22. You just said a lot of different numbers. Well, I have my D8 plus 6, and then I rolled an 8. So it's 8, 6, and 8. Okay. That was fun. You killed him. Yay. And I will action surge. And I will go after the next one. You can't move to him, and he's more than 5 feet away. Oh, well, then never mind. Yeah. That's why I was asking. Wah, wah, wah. I'll just take a beat while somebody else kills something. Is action surge once a battle? Is that how that works? Uh, no, it's once per short rest. Okay. <clears throat> Two ghouls attack. Bastards! Uh, that's a hit. It's one hit, one miss. So, uh, give me one second. Well, actually, let me roll that in proper order, because you never know. Five damage and a constitution saving throw. Con save is 23, and I will repost. Okay. Mark off my dice. 25 to hit. 13, 19 damage. Significant. Not that significant. is significant. <laughs> All right. Is that a fairy fired one? It would have been, yeah. Okay. Just keep that um, in mind for Calista. Both of those Runner. on him are. The rest of them are going to run past that area and look like they're making their way towards Callista and Kanto. And are, in fact, all going to take dash attacks, or dash troopers. <clears throat> and one non-fairy fire and one fairy fire will go to uh, Callista and get up on her and just say, hey. And... The other two will be at the base of the stairs. That's not enough cool stuff. The 
That is enough gold. Okay. Yes. Oh, two sorry. Two stairs, two on Callista, one yeah. dead, two on Thorla. So they have to go up the stairs one at a time, right? No. Or not? Okay, damn. Every one of those squares that you can see is ten feet. Right. Whoops. Also, you can move through your own thing. Yes. But I meant if I were to stay at the top of the stairs, I was hoping I could keep them one at a time, but oh, that, no. that's not great. They could also potentially scramble the cliff around you. Oh, yes. Right. It's a cool thought in my head, though. Kanto, then Callista, then Ghouls, then Thorla. I don't know. Kanto. Kanto. Callista, are you gone yet? Yeah. Yeah, I was first. Oh. Okay, right. First? So, sw oh, correct, sorry. Switch order, Callista, then Kanto, then Ghouls, and Thrall. There are two only? On you. So. Yes. And keep in mind stuff like burning hands and what things that require saves, uh, you don't, like, get disadvantage or anything for using them right up on you. I think I'll just choke and cross. Twelve. That is a hit. Barely, but it's a hit. And two damage. Alright. If you attempt to move or anything, the other one can attack you, but would you like to try to get away? Or do anything else? Bonus or move action wise? Well, yeah, I'll try to move away. Okay. The other one is going to take a swipe at you. And miss! Okay. Yay! Uh, where are you moving? As far away from them as I can. Do you want to go down into the tunnel, back towards Seven? Do you Backwards. want to go to the cliff and either put your back to the cliff or attempt to scale the cliff? No, I'll go back to Seven. Okay. Three down. So basically, even across with the the southernmost of the rope storm, if that makes sense. Okay. Basically, one square from the corner. Canto. Okay, these guys have a ton of hit points, remember, 20 points a little piece at least so sleep is scary to me uh, I'm going to dissonant whispers the non fairy fire one because I know that wouldn't matter for against advantage or whatever since it's just a will roll for them okay so let's yeah he fails excellent so he takes 3d6 damage a 7 and he only takes 8 damage and he has to move use his reaction to move as far as he can yep okay and then I will take my chance to move around that pillar, or my move. It's a table, but yeah. Oh yeah, on the other side of that table then. Okay. That's me. The one ghoul will uh, run back, uh, getting up the stairs and starting to go around the counter of the table, but not make it. The other one will bound over the table and attack you. Uh, rolled a 12. I'm going to take it and see if he hits me. What's your AC? It's 15. Hit. Okay, go for it. Eight damage. Oh, shit. And a constitution saving throw. Okay. Um, well, I rolled a 15 for my constitution roll. 18. All right, you're good. I take eight damage? Mm -hmm. Oof. Okay. Yeah, there's a reason you have to be level four to be in here. Yeah, no kidding. All right, two versus Thorland. Miss. Crit. Damn it. Oh! If I survive, I want to repost. You're going to take... Go ahead and repost first, because that one attacked first. <laughs> Just in case. Well, it won't attack first. <laughs> Uh, 18 to hit. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't great. Nine. Okay. He says is that's like a really good attack for Callista and I. Yeah, nine I will... damage. No, like, half your stuff doesn't add your modifier. Like, 2d8 came up to three. <laughs> All right. Um, the crit deals 13 damage. And I'm going to make the constitution checks a little bit harder, just for funsies, but I don't think, sure. I don't think you're going to have trouble with it. Yeah, that's super funsies. fun. Now's when I roll a one. You're going to have to, yeah, you're going to have to roll a couple. Nineteen. With, all right, uh, you're fine. 
The uh, it's, it's a really easy Constitution save check, by the way. Um, I have a plus five on my con save. Don't you also have advantage? Only against poison. Not against being True, paralyzed. True. Not normal con. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, of course, you're not an elf, so no. Two versus Callista now. They're gonna chase after you. They have the same movement as you, <laughs> so presumably they can get to you. I just had this total Scooby Doo picture in my head of like paper cut out Callista and ghouls running back and forth. <laughs> that first one um, rolls a twenty three. Ouch. Yeah, uh, and I'm gonna resolve him just in case he paralyzes you. Oh, that's that's not great. Uh, eight damage. Uh, all right. And a con saving throw. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, uh, that's a four. You are <laughs> paralyzed. No. Uh oh. Here's what that means. You are incapacitated which means you can take no actions or reactions. You can't move. You can't speak. You fail strength and dexterity saves. Attacks against you have advantage, and they crit automatically when within five feet of you. Oh, um, what? Oh, which wow. is why I have been rolling them one at a time. Oh, oh, right. This next one, if it hits with advantage, is an auto crit. Oh, I'm so sorry, Callista. That's 14. That hits. Yeah. All right. Oh. <sighs> you take. Oh, actually, you know what? Because he was gonna. Now that you're paralyzed, he's biting you. This. This. Instead. This is just a uh, gang initiation, right? They just beat the crap out of us, and we get to join their gang. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would anyone like to take a guess at how much damage he does to you with his bite instead of his claws? I'm gonna say. Just... I'm gonna say 18. It's a very good guess. You take 18 points of damage. Hey! Well, that's kind of cool, uh, I guess. <laughs> I guess, 18. right? And Cantu uh, can have inspiration. So. <laughs> yay! That's yay! Because I always forget to give that out, and I feel bad about it. That puts me at minus 14, by the way. <laughs> Whoa! 